in this video, we're going to describe how in vitro fertilization works. Let's first begin by recapping the female menstrual cycle. Here is the brain, and two important parts of the brain involved in the menstrual cycle is the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Here is the lower female tract. We are zooming into the right ovary. A woman of reproductive age has many follicles within each ovary, ready to develop each month. The menstrual cycle is typically 28 days in duration. The menstrual cycle at day one begins with the release of gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH for short, from the hypothalamus. GnRH stimulates the pituitary gland to release follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and later luteinizing hormone, or LH for short. Follicle-stimulating hormone travels to the ovary where it stimulates the development of some follicles. During the development process, the follicles will produce estrogen, an important hormone for female menstruation. By day 14 of the menstrual cycle, estrogen levels are so high now that it will stimulate luteinizing hormone release from the pituitary gland. With luteinizing hormone being released, it will trigger ovulation of the most developed follicle in the ovary. The follicle ovulates, releasing an egg. The egg will then travel along the fallopian tube and will either be fertilized by the male sperm or not. The follicle that just released the egg will then become the corpus luteum, which slowly degenerates until day 28 of the menstrual cycle. Along the way, while it degenerates, the corpus luteum produces progesterone, an important hormone for pregnancy. Therefore, estrogen is important for the menstrual cycle and progesterone is important for pregnancy. The female menstrual cycle is 28 days in duration and can be divided into two phases. Day 1 to 14 is the follicular phase where there is follicular development producing estrogen. Following ovulation between days 14 to 28 is the luteal phase where the luteum slowly degenerates while releasing progesterone. Interestingly, this degeneration of the corpus luteum stops if there is successful fertilization, and this is in order to keep the production of the pregnancy hormone progesterone by the corpus luteum. In vitro fertilization is a method to help infertile couples achieve conception. In vitro fertilization can be divided into five steps. The first step is controlled ovarian stimulation. And this is using gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists or gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists, plus gonadotropins such as follicle-stimulating hormone. And then finally, human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG. These three injections are used in the first step of in vitro fertilization, and their role is to essentially stimulate follicle development. So here is the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland again, and here is the ovary again, containing many follicles ready to develop. Normally, as we have learned, the hypothalamus produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone at day one of the menstrual cycle. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone stimulates the release of follicle-stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland. Follicle-stimulating hormone will travel to the ovary to stimulate follicle development. Controlled ovarian stimulation using gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists begin at day 20 of the previous menstrual cycle, the time when the corpus luteum is slowly degenerating. And gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists is continued until day 10 of the new menstrual cycle. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists prevent spontaneous follicle rupture due to luteinizing hormone surge and promotes follicle development. At day one of the menstrual cycle, gonadotropins are introduced. Gonadotropins are there to stimulate follicular development. 
When ultrasound monitoring indicates that the eggs are mature, human chorionic gonadotropin is injected to induce final follicle maturation and development, and subsequently ovulation. This is about day 10 of the menstrual cycle. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists stimulates gonadotropin-releasing hormone activity. Gonadotropins mimic follicle-stimulating hormone, stimulating follicle development. And human chorionic gonadotropin stimulates the final follicle development. Another initial drug that can be used for controlled ovarian stimulation is gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists. Again, the hypothalamus produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which stimulates the pituitary to release follicle-stimulating hormone. Follicle-stimulating hormone stimulates the development of some follicles from the ovaries. In this method, at day one, you start gonadotropins to stimulate follicular development. At day six, gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists are introduced to prevent spontaneous follicle rupture due to the luteinizing hormone surge and to promote follicle development. When ultrasound monitoring indicates that the eggs are mature, human chorionic gonadotropin is injected to induce final follicle development and ovulation at about day 10. The ova or egg is then collected about 36 to 38 hours after the human chorionic gonadotropin injection. This brings us to step two of in vitro fertilization which is oocyte retrieval. Here again is the lower female reproductive tract, the vagina, the uterus, the fallopian tube, and the ovary. The ova, or eggs, are collected about 36 to 38 hours after the human chorionic gonadotropin injection. Oocyte retrieval is performed using a long, hollow needle introduced via the vagina under ultrasound guidance. Here, the needle is retrieving the egg from the mature follicle. Eggs are then placed in culture media and incubated before being fertilized. And this brings us to the third step of in vitro fertilization, which is fertilization. And fertilization here occurs in the laboratory. The oocyte, which has been retrieved, are fertilized with the male sperm collected, and this is day zero. By day one, the first cell divisions take place in the laboratory. Cell division continues. And by day three to five, the embryos will be transferred back into the uterus. And this is step four, embryo transfer. Here again we have the female uterus and its structures. During embryo transfer, one or more embryos are transferred back into the uterus about three to five days after the oocyte has been collected. Once transferred, the embryo can then implant into the inner lining of the uterus called the endometrium. Once this occurs, the final step of in vitro fertilization which is luteal phase support takes place. And this essentially involves progesterone. Luteal phase, if you remember, is the phase of the menstrual cycle where progesterone is normally produced. And this is exactly what this step involves. Progesterone is given to help support and maintain the pregnancy. The embryo, as mentioned, is carefully put back inside the uterine cavity, where it will implant in the endometrium of the uterus. This process is called implantation and will lead to pregnancy. And as mentioned, progesterone here helps maintain, helps support the pregnancy. Let us recap now the five important steps in in vitro fertilization. Number one was controlled ovarian stimulation. And this was with gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists or gonadotropin-releasing hormone antagonists plus gonadotropins plus human chorionic gonadotropin. The second step is oocyte retrieval. The third is fertilization in the laboratory. 
Four is embryo transfer into the uterus. And five is the luteal phase support using progesterone. This video was created with the support of Gedeon Richter.